Bokshi. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. This is Carrie Lynn here with University of Acadia and Frank O'Collins from Australia here to speak with us on some more great educational uh, op- ideas and uh, some options for possible relief and hopefully get some light bulbs switched on. Today is the uh, 17th day of the 8th month, 2011. That would be the 17th of August, 2011, over here on the uh, states. States over here in, uh, on the, what do we call that, Frank? The uh, oh, West. In, if, for you, Katie, days? Mm-hmm. Oh, you put me on the spot. Oh, uh, no, that's okay. We don't have to do your Acadia time. Well, it'd be interesting for folks to at least uh, know they can go check out Acadia time. Uh, yes. I, I think if they go to uh, globe, G-L-O-B-E hyphen org, uh, or even uh, com, or even one hyphen org, they all have the Acadia time. You can go and look at the Acadia time there. Yes. Very good. Take a look at that. All right, Frank, uh, let's get the uh, things rolling here. I'll turn it over to you. Uh, Thanks, Terry. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, Thanks for coming on tonight, those that are listening live and also those that will be listening to this call later on. Uh, As we say each week, what we're trying to do here is present information that is coming from great research. Uh, Not everything's coming from me. Much of this material is coming through conversations and fantastic work that a number of you, many of you are doing. And as a policy, whenever we encounter important information, whenever we can find some way of validating that information, we want to share that with you as an open knowledge policy. So tonight, I'm looking forward to sharing with you some of the latest research and discussion on the question of what exactly are they doing to us from the time when we're born, from the time we're seven. And so the subject tonight, the topic tonight is going to be on the concept of what does it mean to be in interstate or intestate and the importance of wills. The other area I want to cover, and I'm looking forward to covering this because we haven't spoken about this before in much detail, is what is warrants? What is the mechanics of warrants? Obviously, warrants is an issue that many people have been affected by and many people still have issues with. And I want to share with you some of the insights and the updates to the canons on warrants. When we are talking about intestate, I also want to cover the issue of birth certificates because I know in the last few weeks, and not just because we've spoken about it, but this issue of what actually is a birth certificate, is it valuable? Is it merely a a confirmation that we are some kind of peon from peonage or pauper, what actually is it? Because there are still lots and lots of active discussion on birth certificates. I want to add some more to that, and I want to hopefully clear up as much as we can do what we really mean by birth certificates and those questions. I also want to bring up to speed on the uh, package uh, that was due to go to Rome and is a few days late, but that package uh, should be and hopefully is up on University of Eucadia now. And so I want to share with you what that package is. And those of you who have offered in the past that would like to write, I want to uh, give mention to it, explain it, and, and show where you can go and see the Word documents and material. And uh, of course, just some housekeeping. We mentioned websites and some other things and updates to material. I want to go through and let you know where we're at with those things. So there's a few things to cover tonight. But let's get started right up front with this question of intestate and what are they doing to us from the moment that we're born and what does it really mean when we talk about wills. So as we have been going through and trying to uncover exactly what has the private bar guild, what has the Roman cult, And what has other groups done to us? We have debated and discussed different forms of remedy and different understandings. Some of these 
you will find are discussed by many groups. Birth certificates, for example, uh, declaring us dead is nothing new. This has been understood for some time and, and corporations are dead. These things have been out there in the truth movement for, for quite some time. At the same time, we have mentioned things like baptism, uh, being a ritual that effectively cleaves your soul in their rituals, and even the word treasure being a hidden uh, description of the most ancient ritual of salvaging of souls in the placing of bronze coins on the eyes uh, or silver coins on the eyes and the mouth and, of course, the transport of the soul uh, across the river Styx to, with the ferryman uh, as part of the ancient Egyptian belief system. When we've raised those things, part of the problem is getting a handle on how such a system could actually operate and getting on top of how such knowledge would be transmitted even to their own members. Now, when we presented the ecclesiastical deed poll, we made clear a number of the assertions and the presumptions and the knowledge that we have. That, number one, we know as an absolute certainty that certain trusts are formed in the name, the legal person name, that we, have, we, we are granted from the time of our birth. We know this. This is a fact. We know it exists. We know it's a fact that there is ecclesiastical rituals associated with the creation of these and that those rituals are also associated with some of the documents that are created. Hence the drop of blood in one respect. Hence the footprints of babies in another respect. Hence the use of the word and the name registrar. All these are associated with ecclesiastical ritual. But what we haven't done is we haven't taken the bigger picture yet and viewed the landscape with fresh eyes to see, with the knowledge we have, is there any evidence that may better describe for us the public face of these ecclesiastical rituals. Now, if we've spoken about court, I believe we have provided an abundance of evidence that, that concur and support that at the root of every court case in Roman court is the sacrament of penance. And we have been able to show that consistent with the sacrament of, of penance being a confession and a self-confession, that we were able to reveal how they converted and perverted the role of the accusator in Roman law to the role of the prosecutus in order to claim that we ultimately confess ourselves, the prosecutor acting in our own skin. Now, this gave us an insight into how the public face of statute and procedure is a reflection of an ecclesiastical ritual that parallels it. So what is the public face then of this whole aspect of being declared dead, of baptism, of treasure, of the Sesta KVs, of all this hidden knowledge that we have discovered, which we still see through the ecclesiastical deed polls, a complete and utter stone wall. What is the public face? Well, let me ask a rhetorical question to all those that are listening. If you were to identify one consistent communication from the private bar guilds across the world, almost as if it was a public service announcement, what would be one of the most commonly spoken of subjects? that almost every lawyer will say, and by the time we reach the age of 40, we probably have heard about it dozens and dozens of times. Well, I said it's a rhetorical question, so let me answer that. It is, you need a will. You need a will. It is the one constant that all lawyers and the system rams home to us 
once we achieve the age of majority of 18, normally, in most countries, and actually continues to increase almost to a fever pitch, you need a will. You have to have a will. If you don't have a will and testament and you die, then guess what? Your estate will be placed into intestate or intestate. And we are told what that means. So pretty much all of us can summarize what intestate means. Intestate means that without a will, your estate will be administered by trustees who will then assume the role of the executor. And as assuming the role of executor, they will decide how your estate is to be administered, not you. Why? Because you don't have a will. Well, this certainly sounds like not only a public service announcement, but clear evidence that the private bar guild has given more than enough knowledge to us as to the importance of a will and what happens to us if we don't have a will. Well, let's now go back and consider this. When is a will in effect? Is it in effect when you write it? Or is it only in effect when that will is registered as a deed by a registrar of the Court of Public Record or the, or the Recorder of Deeds? Well, the answer is uh, a will does not exist in their system until it is a deed. Until it is a deed, they may claim outside of court to acknowledge a will, but it is not a will. It, at that point, it is, is merely the intention of a will, and until it is recorded as a deed, it is not in effect. So on the one hand, we're told by the private bar guild, you need a will. The will is evidence of your will. I mean, that sounds like a funny... Word play, but that's ultimately what it is. The will is the physical evidence of your intent, your will, your competence of your own affairs, the management of your own estate. And until it is recorded as a deed, it does not exist in their system. Now, doesn't it seem extraordinary that one of the primary roles of lawyers across the world is as the gatekeepers of wills to hold them in due course to ensure they are never registered until the death of the flesh. Now they may argue that they do this to ensure that number one, a will is designed properly. We'll get into the proper design of a will in a moment. And two, because wills are so valuable is to make sure that it doesn't go lost but then again, we have other documents that are as important as wills and lawyers don't seem interested in keeping. And of course, the third is to make sure that if we should die, that it can be recorded and executed. And the other might be, they may argue, is the reason we don't submit it as a record, as a deed, until you pass, is that it may change. Well, of course, there is well-established rules and examples of the modification of a will after it has been executed as a deed of trusts and that's called codicils and of course the interpretation of wills and probate happens by courts every day of the week and courts have been shown to modify wills every day of the week so all of those arguments may sound reasonable superficially but the one question is, why are they not recorded? Why are they held until the very end? If it is so important that a will and the absence of a will means we're effectively intestate. Now, what is the public ritual that they do to us around the age of seven, around the age of reason, after seven years have passed? And under CESPICA use, if seven years have passed, 
and the presumption that we are lost and abandoned 